Well, hello there. Let's talk life in Brussels, shall we? I think it's the second most international city after Dubai. That's one thing I'll never get used to, is how weird the Belgian sirens are. Oh, wow. This really is the good life. Also, live a little. Have a beer. Have an apérol. Hola, and welcome. I'm Alexandra, a yoga teacher, chocolate enthusiast, and American, currently living my very own European dream. Now, I've been living in Europe for the past eight years. The first four were spent in Prague, Czech Republic, and the last four here in the Belgian capital, Brussels. And there are quite a few differences between life here on the European continent and life back in the States. So today's video is for those who may be considering a move to Brussels or to Europe, or for those who may just be Europe curious and want to see what daily life is like here. Some of the points I'm going to mention are specific to Brussels, and some are more general to life in Europe. Let's go. Actually, before we begin, I just wanted to point out this little plaque here, which is on Rue Cayenvelt, which is where Audrey Hepburn was born in 1929. How cool. She was from Brussels, or at least was born here. The first point in today's video is that you can walk almost everywhere. It's been my experience both here and while I was living in Prague that most places that I go day to day can be reached on foot. One thing that I feel really spoiled by is my current commute to work, which is less than 20 minutes, again, by foot. Now, I really like this feature to living in Europe because walking is great for the body. It's convenient, it's free, you get fresh air. Well, I do live in a city, so the air is not the freshest, but we work with what we got. Now, all cities in Europe were designed pre-car. Things are much older here obviously. So they were designed with the pedestrian in mind. Streets are narrower, things are much more condensed, and it's much easier to navigate on foot. In contrast, however, the U.S. was designed with the car in mind. So cities are much more sprawling, things are spread out, making it a little bit harder to walk places. My home city of D.C. is the exception to this because we have metro, bus, and it's very easy to walk place to place. And I think that's one reason why I like Brussels so much is because I see a lot of similarities to D.C. They're both capitals, they have the hub of major institutions like NATO, and here we have the European Union, and you have a flavor for everybody. So there's so many nations represented, there's so many languages spoken, it feels very vibrant, dynamic, and just stimulating to be here. Our next point in today's video is about food, and it takes us here to Van der Mühlen. Also because I'm getting a little bit hungry and I cheekily want some Belgian fries. So let's enjoy them together, shall we? Yum! Oh wow. The show is see. Merci. Dallas, okay. Super. That's just super hot. Yum. Bon appétit. All right, for this next point, we are going to enjoy the fries together. Well, I'm going to be enjoying the fries, but we're gonna talk about food here in Brussels. As I mentioned, there are lots of nations represented here. I think more than 180, which is almost the whole world. I think it's the second most international city after Dubai. And with that comes a lot of perks. The food scene here is wonderful, as exhibited by these fries. Oh yes, back to food. There's a lot going on here. And Brussels is the hub of the European Union. Because EU is a single market, you have the benefit of a lot of countries exporting their best stuff because they want to share the wealth. So with that, you get pasta from Italy, cheese and wine from France, you've got Pilsner from Czech Republic. It's all going on. And I have to say that this is actually very similar to when I was living in Prague. The food scene there was also wonderful. Not quite as expansive, but still the food selection was wonderful. Very high quality and a lot of choice. One big adjustment I found when moving to Europe is that in the US, supermarkets are very common. You have these mega stores where you can find all of your stuff, which on the one hand is super convenient because if you need bread and allergy medicine, you can go to the same place, which is cool. However, here things are a little bit different. There are specialty shops for individual items. So you have your fishmonger to get fresh fish. You have your bakery. You have your fry man to get your Wednesday afternoon fries. You have your cheese shop, which is great. It's a little bit less convenient, obviously, but it means that each person does what they do best. It's just afternoon, so don't judge me for enjoying my beer. There are no rules. I'm not teaching anymore today. This really is the good life. Just a girl and her fries. There's not much more I can say about the food scene here, but I will leave a few of my favorite places, both restaurants and 
food shops in the description box below if you find yourself in Brussels. I'm almost hesitant not to disclose them because they're kind of my secret places, but I also care about you guys and I want you to have fresh pasta, fresh cheese, fresh spices. So yes, I will share, reluctantly. I just had an idea. Follow me, we're gonna head out. I think I know some people who can help me finish these fries. Quick stop in the studio, animo! Anybody want fries? Quick shameless plug for the studio that I work with here in Brussels, animo. We now have three locations around this city and offer different classes in each location. The staff is wonderful and I feel very lucky to work here. She's getting it. The next point in today's video has to do with travel. Now I'd say that in general, traveling to Europe as an American is a pretty big deal. It's expensive, it's far away, there are different languages spoken, different currencies, there's a time change. There's a lot going on. And I remember when I was living back in the States and someone thought that they were going, for example, to Croatia or to Italy, it was super luxe. However, since living here, I've come to realize, not at all take for granted because it's still amazing to me, it's still really a wonderful perk of being here, is that travel within Europe is quite affordable. And since my eight years here on the continent, I have been able to travel to, for example, Poland by bus for about 20 bucks. I've flown to Italy for 100 euros round trip. And I've taken the train to Berlin for less than 30 euros. And I'm not saying that at all to brag. It's still, as I said, really special to me. It's never something that I'll take for granted, but it's just, it's quite common here. And there is the infrastructure of train, bus, flights. There's cheap airlines like Ryanair, that make it very easy to travel between countries. It's just, it's similar in distance, and I would say in price, to going to the neighboring state, or as Americans go to Mexico for holiday, or to the Caribbean, which conversely, for Europeans, going to the Caribbean is super bougie. So, the grass is always greener, eh? All right, team, we're gonna wrap up today's video with a point that I admittedly know very little about, which is fashion. Europeans, I would say on average, dress more formally than Americans. Exhibit A, this abandoned shirt, and even it is a button down. So fancy. This was a big adjustment for me when moving here for two reasons. One, when I left the States, athleisure was in, and potentially still is, in its heyday. And I'm a human, and I like to be comfortable as often as possible. And number two is that I'm also a personal trainer, so the majority of my closet is comprised of workout clothes. And I would say that here, Europeans, unless they are specifically working out, don't wear leggings day to day. Most of their clothes are tailored, slim fit, and it's not uncommon to see dress shoes worn as everyday shoes. There's a man right here, and I don't know if it's okay to film him. He has a beautiful dog, and he's wearing a three-piece suit. It's 12.30 in the afternoon on a Wednesday. Oh, he looks so fabulous. Casual afternoon walk. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. I had a really nice time taking you around this city. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comments down below. I will meet you all down there. And this may be part one, because I've been living here, as I said, for about eight years. So I have a lot to say on the matter. If that's something you would enjoy seeing, then also just let me know down below. All right, take care. Wishing you all a beautiful rest of your day. And I'll see you back here real soon. I only had the one beer, but going back to point number one, which is that it's a huge benefit that you can walk everywhere here, day drinking is not a bad vibe. <laughs> of course, everything in moderation. I am a trainer, so watch your health first, but also live a little. Have a beer. Have an apérole.